Recently, QD OLED, which aroused curiosity at CES 2022, was finally unveiled by Samsung Display, not by Samsung Electronics. It expresses a value that is close to 90% of the BT2020 standard, which is known to be the most difficult to meet among the standards of color reproduction ability. Compared to the G1 series, which is a top product in the existing white OLED lineup, the color expression ability is improved by almost 20%. In HDR mode, the highest luminance can be expressed at 1,500 nits, which is an 80% improvement compared to the G1 product of white OLED. Therefore, QD OLED TV is undoubtedly the best display that can display the flashing laser beams or the blazing bright sun in sci-fi movies close to reality. What remains now is a question of how QD OLED will react in the market. The technical aspect was explained in detail in the previous video. So in this video, we'll look at QD OLED from the consumer's point of view and from the marketing point of view. So let's start the tech tree. At CES 2022, almost simultaneously with Samsung Display's QD OLED announcement, Sony and Dell announced that they would sell QD OLED equipped TV and PC monitors respectively. But Samsung Electronics was not there. Ten years ago, when Samsung Display produced AM OLED for mobile phones, Samsung Electronics did not use it in the beginning, but rather deja vu in a situation where Taiwanese HTC and Finland's Nokia were the first customer. On the other hand, Sony announced that it would release 4K resolution 55-inch and 65-inch TVs equipped with QD OLED as the A95K series in the second half of this year, just as Sony plans to produce the world's first TVs with the world's best performance regardless of price and put them on their website product lineup. However, it was not as expected that 8K resolution would be the first product, especially since Sony is the first company to release QD OLED TV product. As mentioned in the previous video, QD OLED has a higher aperture ratio compared to white OLED in the same display size. So 8K implementation is relatively easy and I have explained why it is easy to implement 4K resolution even on small panels. For that reason, the technically distinct 65-inch 8K TV was expected to be the first product. In that sense, it can be said that the 34-inch 4K QD OLED, which Dell plans to release in March, is the product that can maximize differentiation from white OLED. This is because it is very difficult at present to produce a small size of the 34-inch with 4K resolution using the white OLED method. In particular, high color gamut, extra color expression ability, wide viewing angle, improved brightness, and microsecond level response speed that other display cannot achieve will not require further improvement. For people in special occupations such as design or video production, it can become a master monitor. It is undoubtedly the number one most suitable application for QD OLED. Of course, the price difference will be burdensome compared to the existing mini LED LCD, but it will be a temptation that experts cannot resist. So what about Sony's 55-inch and 65-inch lineups? My personal opinion is that it is not expected to be very successful. Compared to white OLED, the color expression ability and the peak luminescence in HDR mode are so excellent that comparison is not insignificant. But there are very few opportunities for non-professionals to see colors close to the primary color on the screen and the 1,500 nit peak luminescence may feel too stimulating. I think there is probably difference of opinions. Regarding burn-in, LG's white OLED also uses a deuterium-substituted light-emitting material, so burn-in is likely to be alleviated at the same brightness in the new lineup in 2022. So it seems that it is not yet at the stage where it is superior or inferior 
Samsung display also emphasize only the viewing angle, color gamut, and high peak luminescence in HDR, but did not mention burning in particular. For white OLED, 55-inch and 65-inch 4K resolution TVs are the most competitive product in terms of technology and equipment. The fact that QD OLED is fighting with white OLED in this segment based on the characteristics that non-professional consumers do not feel a big difference is like a jumping into a very unfavorable environment on its own. Considering the fact mentioned above, it is possible to explain why Samsung Electronics is hesitant to launch QD OLED TV. Samsung Electronics is marketing Neo QLED based on LCD then uses Mini LED backlight as a technology that is more advanced than white OLED. And it has been marketing to recognize QLED, which is one level lower than Neo QLED, as being equivalent to white OLED. But what if QD OLED, which is much more expensive than white OLED or Neo QLED, is added to Samsung Electronics TV lineup? Compared to white OLED, the production process is added and it is difficult to secure the production yield because it is in the early stage of production. Therefore, the production cost of QD OLED is much higher than that of white OLED or Neo QLED. As a result, it is inevitably positioned at the top of Samsung Electronics TV lineup, and it would be difficult for Samsung Electronics to conduct marketing by comparing the characteristics of Neo QLED with the weakness of OLED any longer. And if consumers do not feel the difference between 65-inch 4K QD OLED and 4K white OLED, consumers will eventually choose white OLED with excellent cost effectiveness. Therefore, at this point in time, when the price of QD OLED is high, the best scenario that Samsung Electronics TV division can take is to purchase white OLED from LG Display at as low a price as possible and place it in a lower position of Neo QLED, at least until Samsung Display has the ability to produce 8K 65-inch or 75-inch panels at a reasonable price. In conclusion, if Samsung Display cannot secure yield early and produce panels with 65-inch to 75-inch resolution of 8K at a reasonable price, QD OLED will have a hard time for a while. This is probably the reason why Samsung Electronics did not exhibit QD OLED TVs at CES 2022. That's it for today. Goodbye.